we're gonna we're gonna address the big thing about uh, Justin's Jeep. We did a, a couple things that we love and hate about my car. That's Duquesne. Now he's on the spot. His rust bucket, I like to call it the shit box, uh, is a. Uh, is like one of the best things that ever happened to us and one of the worst, so <laughs> we're definitely gonna talk about it. But we will catch you guys in a little bit. Um, we're just gonna keep the drive going, we'll be right back. I'm not saying that we're not supposed to be here, but I think it is common knowledge that we most likely shouldn't be here. But yeah. Beautiful. Not the Jeep, but yeah, the area around the place is pretty nice. So we're gonna go over a few things that oh, oh, he bro. loves in him. Oh my God. I gotta take it. The fuck, the gram. For the gram, baby. Plug it. Follow me on Instagram at Justin underscore the Jeep guy. You will not be disappointed. Where's it gonna go? Put it, put it somewhere. It's gonna go right here. <laughs> God damn, my hair looks good. All right guys, so as you can tell, my Jeep is modified. So I'm gonna go over real quick what I have on it and the parts I have so you guys know what I'm talking about. So we're gonna start in the front. The suspension I have, I have a five inch coil spring and an inch and a quarter body lift on the front. Um, and on the rear of the Jeep, I have a four inch coil spring started as a kit it was four inches all the way around but um, with uh, heavy winch on the front heavy bumper and the motors very heavy there was a lot of a sag so I had to get bigger springs to compensate and make the Jeep look level again because it looked like shit and had that grandpa rake that you get on the front of trucks still looks like shit by the way still looks like shit <laughs> so for the tires I have 33 by 12 and a half Nikki Thompson Baja MT PZ3. Great tire. Look how meaty that is. The claws on those things are incredible. I love them. These are my, one of my favorite tires. So it's sitting on a rim that's 15 by 8. Um, it's a black rock street something. I don't know. I, I think the wheels are worth maybe 100 bucks a piece. Hell yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Five inch on the front, four inch on the rear, and that's that's the gist of it. First thing that we hate is the freaking gas mileage. It's horrible. I'll be driving around town, you know, I probably get what, 200 miles on a tank? Yeah, I'm talking like 20 maybe, if you're lucky. <laughs> I think actually, I think legitimately, I've done the math before and I get 11 or 12 miles of the gallon around the city. That's so bad. It's horrible, it's horrible. So. In reality, if you're gonna buy a Jeep, you're gonna be spending a lot on gas, especially if you daily drive it like I daily drive mine. Second thing I hate about my Jeep is the reliability. This piece of <laughs> is always broken. <laughs> it always looks like this, sitting in the garage with the hood up. Can't tell you how many times I've had this whole thing apart and put back together, still doesn't work. So if you're gonna be buying a Jeep, be prepared to spend a lot for parts, um, have a lot of money saved up because shit does break, especially when you abuse it like me. Follow my Instagram, you'll see how I abuse it. Plug it. Justin underscore the Jeep guy. <laughs> Third thing I hate about my Jeep TJ is that there is absolutely no storage room. You can't put anything in the back. They market it as a four person car, but you can't sit two people back there. You're literally sitting like this with your knees in your chest. Especially when you got stiff off-road suspension, you go over speed bump, those people are like kicking out their teeth with their knees when they're sitting back there. It's horrible. So there is hardly any room for storage space. I could barely fit my snowboard back there. You can't fit a lot. And most of the time they give you the option to have a back seat that's removable. Most of the time I don't even run my back seat. It's not worth it. No one wants to sit back there. It's hot, you get sweaty. It's, you're basically hot boxing your car with the beat. I know, it's a piece of shit. It sucks. <laughs> I've been in it multiple times. <laughs> I don't like those seats. Yep, that's the third thing I hate. The fourth thing I hate about Jeep TJs is they're difficult to drive. There's not very many people I let drive this car because it does take some amount of self-awareness. So when you're driving this, 
you aren't driving the car. I like to say that the car drives you and you just kind of have to point it in the direction you want and hope it gets there. Because when you're on the road and there's wind, you're all over the place. You could be going straight and your steering wheel could be almost 90 degrees. It is difficult to drive. The brakes are sh There's not very much acceleration, so you kind of have to mash the pedal. You just have to be very aware when you drive one of these. It's not a car you can just, you know, just cruise and kind of not pay attention, lose focus. You actually need to like try and pay attention to drive a Jeep like this. The final thing I hate about my Jeep Wrangler is that it is a money pit. You have to be very prepared to take this thing to the shop, keep up with the maintenance, and just repairs I've probably spent $4,500 on this car. And I'm gonna say 45 grand. Yeah, it's like $4,500 on this car and just repairs. That's not including like mods or anything aftermarket. That is just repairs. Um, it's anything as spark plugs go out, you know, your normal distributor, coil pack, whatever goes out. Um, I've had to replace my crankshaft position sensor like four times. I remember and every e single one. Each time, the, each time that sensor is like 50 bucks. And so it really adds up. I just got, I don't even know how, I'm gonna tell you guys. My exhaust manifold cracked on the way going to LA. Took it to the shop, they pulled off my intake manifold and that's cracked too. How the hell do you crack an intake manifold? That doesn't even happen, like I don't even understand. It was cracked in half. It happens and you just have to be prepared to spend a lot to keep this thing up and working. Um, it is my daily driver so I have no other choice but to spend money to fix it. Soon, hopefully soon, it won't be. Talk about what you needed to do and how much money you spent on your stuff so far to get it to the point where you can wheel like this. I think that's a really good thing. That's what people are gonna look for. Be like, if I buy a car for 10 grand, I'm gonna have to spend another five grand to do the fun shit that I keep seeing on the internet, not just 10 grand. So realistically, I bought my Jeep for about $10,000 with 98,000 miles on it. So these cars keep their value really nicely, but they are expensive. And so to get it to something like this point, um, not including repairs, just aftermarket parts, maybe dump $3,000, three, $4,000 into it to get lift, wheels, tires, aftermarket tie rods, steering, just stuff you might need just to play it safe. I redid my brakes and so, to get to a point where you can wheel, it's gonna take roughly three, $4,000 extra. So if you're planning on buying one stock, keep that number in mind. So before we get to the five things I love, follow my Instagram at Justin underscore the Jeep guy. <laughs> so first thing I love, how easy these Jeeps are to work on. So if we come over here and take a look at the inside, if you've never looked under the hood of a Jeep TJ four liter, Look how much freaking room there is for activity, baby. The possibilities are endless. It's so easy just to access all the normal maintenance stuff. They're really fun to work on, super easy. They're really easy to learn about. Typically the motors are pretty bulletproof. Just my advice would be to uh, avoid mud and you won't get your engine just absolutely filthy like this. But yeah, super easy to work on. Um, if you're looking at something to get mechanical with, I definitely recommend an older Jeep like this. Get off your phone. Sorry. Are you on Instagram? Oh yeah, 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 wait, wait. Plug, plug, please, please follow me. Please. <laughs> you can follow me right here at Justin <laughs> underscore the Jeep. The second thing I love about Jeep TJs is the aftermarket support that comes with them. You can buy, it doesn't have to be TJs, any year Jeep ever, there's thousands, there's like, the parts are accessible. Any any nut, bolt you need, but you, you can get literally anything from anywhere to fit on any of these Jeeps. Super is, popular cars. Super popular. There's, you're not gonna find a shortage of parts, you're not gonna run into that issue, and that's why I love it. All right, what are we on? We're on number, number three. Number three. So third thing I love about this is the potential for the stock platform of these cars. When I got this car, I bought a stock, you used to go wheeling in it all the time. It actually does really, really well. You don't need like a lift like this to go have fun, but this definitely helps. You get a lot more clearance. But the what it offers, the stock platform, super great to build on. So if you come over here, I'm still running my factory control arms. So the stock suspension hasn't really changed other than just the suspension lift. So, you know, you, from the axle to the frame, it's still connected by the stock control arm. I'm not like four linked or anything crazy like that. Um, 
So you can buy a lift like this and run this factory suspension without doing any custom fabbing, welding, whatever. You can just buy a kit. I think I bought my lift kit for 800 bucks. I know I'm probably gonna get shit for that, but you know what? It works. Cute. <laughs> The fourth thing I love about my Jeep is the price value of the car. So yes, it is a 1999, it is an old car. I bought it for $10,000 with 100,000 miles on it. It holds value really well and for 10 grand, you can have so much fun in a vehicle like this. The possibilities are actually endless. You can go anywhere, anytime. I mean, I guess some extent, you can't climb the Mount Everest. <laughs> But I mean, you can go out to any of your local off-road parks. If you guys are from San Jose, got Hollister a few hours north, there's uh, the Rubicon. You know, I've heard Jeeps do the Rubicon stock. I have yet to go there, but one day we will and we'll make a video about it. And if you do do something like Everest, be sure to uh, send it to at Justin the Jeep guy on Instagram. Where do they go for that again? My Instagram handle I think is right here, <laughs> at Justin underscore the Jeep guy. <laughs> the fifth thing I love about my Jeep has to be the Jeep community as a whole. Everyone is so nice, so friendly, so great. Um, I actually got into Jeeps through my uncle. He had one, he took my dad off-roading. I was like, oh, I could buy a Jeep for my first car and I could do cool shit like that. So I bought one and you know, my Instagram page has grown and I've met so many cool people. When I was going down to school, I was driving down to LA and I actually broke down on the grapevine and a police officer saw me, he turned around um, on the freeway came to me and pulled up beside me and he's like, I got a funny story for you. He's like, we follow each other on Instagram and he has such a badass Jeep. So he pulled over, helped me out, super awesome. Um, and so just a lot of people I've met are super, super cool. Some of the nicest people I'll ever meet. And the age range is huge. There's freaking 17 year olds out of high school driving these anywhere from like an old Jeep to a new Jeep. And there's people who are, you know, can barely walk still out there wheeling and driving Jeeps. So age range is huge. Almost everyone I've met has been super, super nice. And if you get into this community, you'll fall in love with it. And it'll only make you love your Jeep more. All right guys, so those are the five things I love and hate about my Jeep. And make sure if you guys enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe to us. It really helps us out. We're trying to grow our page. We're relatively new. We have some videos that are doing well and we want to hear your guys' feedback. So make sure you subscribe to support your boys if you love the video. You can follow my Instagram right here. <laughs> I don't know if that'll work. And then Tyler's right here. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Peace out. All right guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. We're always gonna be here. We do have a lot of people. The other day some girl told me I had a small penis for my large pipes. Love comments like that, it's hilarious. Give us we some really that. rude and vulgar comments. Exactly, please. don't do any sort of positive input. Just rail on us. Try to, right? try to give us depression. <laughs> please don't. But we will see you guys next time. It's been a pleasure. I think from this point forward, we're at like, like once a week. Now that he's back, we can do one once a week and we are going to make them once a week. That's a promise. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.